This video describes the item reliability analysis, new in StatGraphic Centurion version 17. An item reliability analysis estimates the reliability or internal consistency of a set of variables. It's commonly used to assess the reliability of questions in a survey or test. There are many other applications, such as comparing raters or indicators to see whether they measure the same thing. The major output is Kronbach's alpha. It's calculated for all variables together and when omitting a single variable at a time. As an example, let's suppose that 15 subjects were asked to rate their agreement six statements about a fictitious software program. The first statement is, I use the program frequently. The second statement, using the program has made me more productive. The third statement, I have obtained important information from my data by using the program. Fourth, the program is more useful than other comparable programs that I've used. The fifth, I'm looking forward eagerly to the next version. And the final statement, I would recommend the program to a friend or colleague. Each subject was asked to rate their agreement on a scale of 1 to 5, where 1 implied strong disagreement and 5 implied strong agreement. I've placed the data for the survey in the Stack Graphics data sheet. There's one row for each subject or respondent, and their response on a scale of 1 to 5 for each of the six statements are placed in the columns Q1 through Q6. To do an item reliability analysis, I'll go to the main menu to describe multivariate methods item reliability analysis. In the field for the variables, I'll put the column names Q1 through Q6. The second dialog box gives me a choice of whether to calculate a standardized version of alpha or an unstandardized version. Since all of the questions here are on the same scale, I'll stick with the unstandardized alpha. I can also request a lower bound for alpha, and I have. I've asked for a 95% lower bound. On the list of tables and graphs, I'll take all the defaults, which will open up an analysis window. The key output is in the analysis summary. In particular, I'll be looking at the value for Kronbach's alpha. It is, in this case, 0 0.77, with a 95% lower confidence bound of about 0 0.58. Kronbox Alpha measures the reliability of a set of k variables by comparing the sum of the variances of those variables to the variance of the sum. Theoretically, alpha should be between 0 and 1, although estimates can fall outside that range. Many researchers believe that alpha should be greater or equal to 0.7 for an instrument to be considered reliable. There's also a standardized version of alpha, which is based on correlations rather than variances and covariances. Returning to stack graphics, You'll notice that Kronbach's alpha is, in fact, greater than 0 0.7, although the lower 95% confidence bound is not. In the second section of the table, you'll see statistics calculated by individually removing each of the variables from the survey, one variable at a time. In the far right column, it calculates the value of alpha 
if in fact that one question had been omitted. In five out of six cases, Kronbach's alpha would go down. However, in the case of question five, if you removed it from the survey, Kronbach's alpha would go up quite substantially. StatGraphX also creates a plot of the alphas when omitting each of the variables, one variable at a time. Here you see Kronbach's alpha on the y-axis and the values that would be obtained if you removed one variable at a time. Only the removal of question 5 would cause Kronbach's alpha to go up and it would go up substantially. To verify that, I'll go back to the data input dialog box, remove Q5 and press OK. That recalculates Kronbach's alpha and it's now moved up to 0 0.906 and even the 95% lower bound is now greater than 0 0.7. This analysis is important in determining whether a set of variables are reliable and internally consistent.